Ethan has been busy channeling his feelings about sensory overload into a new track. Like every time I rap, I bring something different to the table. <laughs> And I've booked a professional recording studio so he can lay down the lyrics. Sounds of conversation will be one of them. Sounds of footsteps will be another. Sounds of dogs will be one of them. Sounds of crying will be another. Especially tears from babies. This new track will form the basis of the film we'll show to his friends. I hope that when people watch the film, it'll have them understand that it's okay to be different. It's okay to not have like the brightest presence in the room. To give me a better understanding of what's going on inside Ethan's head, I'm meeting an expert in autistic hypersensitivity, Dr. Luke Bearden. He's chosen to meet me here at the Moor Market. It's an indoor market, I can see that, and um, it looks pretty busy. Not necessarily in terms of people, but in terms of sensory stimuli of all kinds. I can already smell it from outside. <laughs> oh well, here goes. Oh, God. Nearly all autistic people report being unusually responsive to at least one of the senses. Bright lights, temperature, unexpected noises, texture and taste can all be challenging. Here, it's the smells that are bothering me the most. The fruit is the worst of all for me, I don't know why. That citrus, sicky citrus fruit smell, when you mingle it in with everything else, is, is really unpleasant. You must be Luke. Hi Chris, Hello. welcome. Uh, I feel like I should apologise in advance for dragging you, you here. Apologize. I feel like you're taking one for the team. Um... <laughs> Luke is a senior lecturer and autism researcher at Sheffield Hallam University. He's dedicated his career to speaking to autistic people about their experiences. Why is my sensory experience here so radically different from a non-autistic person? What's happening is your primary senses, whether they're good or bad or indifferent, are picking up all of that external stimuli, and what happens then is what I call the filtering process. The brain takes that sensory information, filters it, and then what the non-autistic person ends up with is a conscious understanding of the sensory environment. OK, so are you saying that for non-autistic people they are able to block this, some of this out? a huge amount of it out, but they're actually not aware of certain sounds or smells or sights and so on, whereas the autistic person is aware of all of it. But how does that work mechanically? How is that wiring different in my brain? There's no definitive answer, which 